This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good morning, I'm Lauren Osborne. Today Sunday, June 12th. Let's check in with meteorologist Arden Gregory for a look at your forecast this morning. Well, yesterday was beautiful, very hot. Oh my gosh, it was so <laughs> hot, but today, we're, we can expect some rain chances, is that right? Yes, still going to be hot. Another warm one on tap for sure. And part of the day is actually going to be mostly sunny, but we do have rain chances in the forecast for later on today. Thankfully, those have not arrived yet, though. Pinpoint Doppler showing nice clean sweeps across eastern Kentucky this morning. No rain has arrived just yet, but like I said, we will be seeing some rain later on this afternoon and evening. Temperature wise, starting out fairly mild across the mountains this morning. Temperatures ranging from the lower 60s into the lower 70s. 63 at Harlan and Middlesboro, 69 in Jackson, and 71 in Prestonsburg, Paintsville, and Pikeville. So if you are headed out the door this morning, you might run into just a little bit of patchy fog, but most of your drives should be fairly clear. Very mild temperatures this afternoon. That hot and humid weather is sticking around and we have those scattered rain chances. I'll have all the details on that coming up in just a little bit. All right, Arden, thank you so much. Well, we're following a story from last overnight. Police say approximately 20 people are dead and at least 42 others are wounded after a gunman opened fire in a crowded Orlando nightclub. According to police, the gunman is also dead. Police said a loud noise heard near the shooting site was a controlled explosion intended to distract the shooter. Local, state and federal agencies are investigating. You can get updates on our website as we get more information. A stretch of Interstate 75 in Lexington is back open this morning after a deadly crash. Police say the crash happened around 1030 last night. 60 year old Robert Allen Wayne Scott Jr. of London was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say another person was taken to a hospital with minor injuries. Deputies need your help identifying a theft suspect. They say the theft happened Friday night at the McDowell IGA. Police say this woman took a cell phone which belongs to a store employee. We're told the phone contains pictures of a recently lost loved one. If you know who this woman is, you can call the Floyd County Sheriff's Office at 606-886-6171. Deputies say they are trying to recover the phone before it is damaged or the pictures are deleted. Later Friday night, Laurel County Sheriff's deputies arrested a woman they say tried to steal from Walmart and had drugs on her. We're told the Walmart theft prevention team caught Heather Abner trying to leave the store without paying. She also said she had a container of Xanax, Suboxone and other pills on her and trying to get rid of them. Deputies say she appeared to be high. She faces theft charges as well as tampering with physical evidence, among other things. Investigators are still trying to figure out what led to a shooting in Laurel County. Deputies say it happened at a home Friday night on Taylor Bridge Road. The sheriff is calling it a domestic situation. There is no word on the victim's condition. Laurel County Detention Center records show no sign of arrest. One Pikeville man gets a second chance at life thanks to an organ donor. James Roop recently received a lung transplant at a Peace Walk in Lexington last night. He came face to face with the mother whose son saved his life. Garrett Weimer has more. At the park, Antonio Franklin lost his life. His mother got to hear his heart beat again. Listen to that strong heartbeat. That was, that was awesome. Yes, that was probably about the best part of it all. You know, have, having her and everybody here, all his friends and family, listen to his heartbeat, uh, you know, still beating on here. Antonio was gunned down two years ago, caught in the crossfire on an April day here in Duncan Park. Police say he was an innocent bystander. He was also an organ donor. I honestly have uh, my life, you know, because of her son, and the sacrifice she had to make, you know, here I am standing before you guys and able to do this walk. My right lung was plumb gone. And my left one, I only had 10% breathing out of my left lung. I probably wouldn't have made it two or three days if it had not been for him. Anita Franklin says it was a dream come true getting to meet two people with part of her son inside them. When I go home tonight, I'll be first on my knees thanking God that that dream he brought to me, it came true. And then I will be on my knees praying that no one else has to experience the loss that I did. Then they walked in Antonio's name and with his tangible legacy 
continuing a mission for peace with every step, with every heartbeat. In Lexington, I'm Garrett Weimer. Officials with Kentucky Organ Donor Affiliates, or CODA, say Antonio Franklin was also able to save two other people through his organ donation. Tennessee officials are searching for a man wanted for several felonies. They say the last time they saw Asante Harris was on Thursday in Knoxville. Police tried to arrest him but lost him in the woods. They consider him armed and dangerous. Investigators say Harris has been flashing guns and threatening people. Back in 2015, officials charged Harris with attempted murder of his then girlfriend. One of the suspects in the murder of former coal executive Ben Hatfield has returned to West Virginia. According to the West Virginia Regional Jail website, Brandon Fitzpatrick is now lodged in the Southwestern Regional Jail. Fitzpatrick and his friend Anthony Arigia are accused of murdering Hatfield at the end of May while he was visiting the grave of his late wife. After officials found him in Kentucky, Fitzpatrick waived extradition and was brought back to West Virginia. He is facing charges of first degree murder and conspiracy. The hot temperatures impacted a popular music festival this weekend. Tennessee officials say while they've made 10 arrests and wrote more than 100 citations so far in Bonnaroo, the heat is their big concern. Authorities urge music lovers to drink water. One person has been treated and released for a heat-related issue. Those with Bonnaroo upgraded this facility this year to include bathrooms and watering stations. One Kentucky man is dead after he was hit by two vehicles on Interstate 24 near the Bonnery Music and Arts Festival. The Tennessee Highway Patrol identified the victim as Casey J. Young of Louisville. According to the report, Young was in the median of the interstate around 1 a.m. yesterday morning and ran into the eastbound lanes. Officials say he ran into the side of a tractor trailer, fell to the ground, and was hit by an SUV. He was 22 years old. Fans of Christina Grimmie, a, a rising star on the music scene, are mourning her tragic death. The former voice contestant was gunned down Friday night in Florida. Now police are looking for a possible motive. Fans of singer Christina Grimmie were in disbelief outside of the Plaza Live Saturday. Cell phone video captured the 22-year-old's final performance. Moments later, police say Kevin Loibel fatally shot Grimmie. She was doing like a meet and greet, you know, signing autographs and selling merchandise. Witnesses say Grimmy's brother tackled the gunman, preventing him from hurting the handful of fans waiting online. That's when the 27-year-old turned the gun on himself. We don't know if they were friends. We don't know if he was just a crazy fan that followed her on Twitter, on social media. Grimmy rose to fame after appearing on The Voice, where she finished in third place during season six. I just want to get something out for my fans so it's not like there's an awkward lull. Her voice coach, Adam Levine, posted this photo on Instagram with the caption, I'm sad, shocked, and confused. This just isn't fair. Christina Aguilera tweeted, so sad passing of at the real Grimmy, beautiful member of the voice family and true fighter. Investigators are now going through Loibel's electronic devices and social media accounts looking for a motive. Hannah Daniels, CBS News, New York. Grimmy grew up in New Jersey, but moved to Los Angeles in 2012 to focus on her music career. A Harlan County native and winner of season nine's The Voice, Jordan Smith posted on Facebook yesterday saying in part, no life is more important than another, but it is so disheartening to see such a huge loss of an amazing bright future that will no longer be. Well, coming up on Mountain News this morning, Donald Trump defends himself against Mitt Romney, who accused the presumptive GOP nominee of trickle down racism. And later in sports, aiming for the final four, Johnson Central battles McCracken County with a spot in the baseball state semifinals on the line. And another hot and muggy day ahead, and we've got some rain chances later today. All of the details on that, plus your full seven-day forecast when we come back.